Hello, hello, and welcome to day five of the Fall for Watercolor Challenge. I am so excited to have you here. We are going to have so much fun today because we are painting an autumn tree. And we are using a very cool technique called scumbling. So let's just, um, basically scumbling is when we scatter little bits of paint on the page. And then we kind of add in some water. Maybe we add in some other colors. So let's just, maybe just watch really quick. Um, and then you can start into it. So I'm just going to make a general tree-like shape. I'm using my Hansa yellow light. Um, it's got a nice kind of lemon yellow vibe. And I'm making a shape that's like kind of like an ice cream cone, um, like the scoop, you know, the ice cream scoop. And I don't know if you can see, let me zoom in a little bit, but there's parts that are that are white that I haven't painted. I'm going to add in just, I have just gone into my water cup and gotten a clean brush filled with water. I'm just going to do that too. You can use big strokes. You can use little strokes. I'm holding, I don't know if you can see, I'm holding my paintbrush very far back. And the reason for this is that when you hold your paintbrush really up close, you're going to have a lot more control. And back here, it's going to be a little looser. So it's easier to kind of let the brush take the wheel, so to speak. Okay, I might grab a little bit of this um, Hansa Yellow Deep too. It's a nice orange color. Oh yeah, okay. I'm just gonna drop that in there too. This is part of the scumbling. Every day I'm scumbling. All right. And I don't wanna add too much dark tones yet. We will, don't worry. Um, but we're gonna let this dry a little bit and then we're gonna actually paint the trunk. So if you have brown on your palette, great. If you don't, you can make brown. I like to grab my perylene um, green. It's like a nice dark green. Um, here, let's mix it a little bit right here so you can see. Okay, so I've got my nice dark green here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my alizarin crimson, or no, alizarin gold, sorry kind of a red color. I like that, but I want it to be just a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna add some of this Hansa yellow. And always with my yellows, I try to like rinse my brush off before I go grab and paint from there because I don't wanna bring all that dirty color into my yellow. Okay, so I've got a nice, uh, what color is this? Brown that I like. Um, and I'm just gonna make my tree trunk. I'm gonna do it kind of like light and airy here. I don't know, I mean, maybe we'll do like a branch there. And I have a lot of water on my brush, so I'm actually kind of tapping some of that water off onto my paper towel. And then I'm taking just a slightly damp brush. I like to just kind of tap it to my paper towel before I get in. Taking a damp brush and then painting just some water in here. I want it to stay really light so that I can add detail later. And one thing you can do with watercolor is leave spaces white. That's gonna give a kind of highlight look. So you don't have to fill it in like, you know, when you're painting, when you're like coloring with markers and you really wanna like fit everything in um, or fill everything in perfectly. Like this is, this can be sketchy. This can be weird, okay? Don't. Lean into the weird. Okay, we're gonna have like maybe a little grass. And I'm just using the tip of my brush, my little ballerina strokes. This little, little nasty little scrubbly little grass line. You know, don't sweat it. Okay, maybe maybe a little greens here by the by the base of that tree. Okay, now I wanna take the very tip of my brush, or you can take a smaller brush if you have one. I don't want a ton of water on this, so I don't know if you can see, but I'm gonna just lightly dab it on my paper towels. So some of that pigment, let's back up just a smidge. So some of that pigment goes onto the paper towel. I don't know if you can see, but doop, and it just leaves a little bit of pigment there. And this is gonna allow me to have a little bit more control over my brush, that tiny tap. I'm just gonna fill in some of the areas where the white was, thinking about where my branches are and it might get in some of my yellow. Ooh, that's okay, you know, it is what it is. You can pick some of that up. I could have been patient and waited for it to dry, but that seems like a lot of work today. So maybe we have a couple little branches out here. We've kind of already lost leaves. 
Maybe we got a little bit right here. Okay. Maybe we got a little bit right here. So I think this is a great start to our tree. And what we're going to do now is we are going to let this dry for a little bit. So I'm going to pause it. You can either use a blow dryer or I use a heat embossing uh, tool to speed up this process, or you can um, be patient. I mean, good luck. I'm very bad at that patient part. So go get a glass of water. I'll see you back in a sec. And we're back. So if you're wondering if your painting is dry yet, you can figure it out in a couple ways. One, you can look at it. Is it shiny? Like if you kind of tilt it back and forth, do you see a little shine? If you do, then it's still wet. If you don't, then you can hover your finger over your painting. Like don't touch it, but just hover it. And if you feel like this cool little breath, this little, br this little breeze, almost like a fairy's blowing on your finger, that is going to show you that your painting is still wet. That is the water that's still evaporating off of your page. So give it a little bit more time. If you are still not sure if you're feeling the fairy breath, you can actually just touch it. And if it feels cold, it's still wet. So give it a little bit more time. Mine is totally dry. I impatiently blow dried it. Um, so we're ready to go. I'm going to get some more of my brown. And again, I'm going to tap it to my paper towel just really briefly because I want... I can kind of help shape the tip of my brush when I do this and get a lot of that extra pigment out. If you've ever been painting and a lot of that pigment just kind of like bleh onto your page, um, this is one way you can avoid that. So I'm gonna use this to make, make some branches. Okay, maybe I want a little bit here. Leaves are starting to fall off, but it's still not quite not quite losing all its leaves yet. Right, maybe we've got a little branch over here. I don't know what's going on over there. And just, I don't know, wherever you feel like it. If there's little gaps where you were scumbling and, um, you know, you see an opportunity for some, some little branches there, that can be a good, good option. And I'm just adding a second layer of brown here to my trunk and Ooh, see, I didn't really tap my brush there and it kind of left a big bubble of paint. And let's zoom in. Hello, here we are. And I'm just doing some nice little light strokes and it's really light and delicate. There we go. Okay, so now that I have some of my tree branches, we can scumble further. So as we're thinking about this, I kind of, I'm imagining the sun's coming from here. So I'm going to imagine that we've got kind of like a clump here, maybe like a little clump up here. And like, this is a big clump and maybe this is a little clump. So I want to kind of keep those ones a little bit lighter at the top of my clumps and then add some darker colors into the underside of the clumps. So I'm going to make an orangey red here. There we go. I'm using my Let's see, what am I using? My primary permanent red and my Hansa yellow. And I'm just gonna scumble in. My scumbling is a little bit smaller here because these leaves, I want them to be a little bit smaller than my under layer where it was just, woo, party. This, this way we're seeing almost the idea of like more individual leaves here. Okay, maybe there's a little bit more here. Okay, there's definitely some shadow in here. I don't know why, but I always make the top of my, like where my sunlight is coming in, I always make it from this side. <laughs> Probably even when I was a kid too, you know, making those like sunshine smiley faces <laughs> in art class and in school. Okay, so I like that. I'm gonna build on that a little bit more with my um, alizarin gold, okay? And I'm gonna scumble it in. So the parts that I just added in are still a little wet. And this is gonna allow me to have these colors blend in really nice and um, gently, instead of it just being like this big swath of dark red, the, the orange color and the red is gonna have a chance to 
play nicely together. And you know, there's gonna be a little bit in these other areas too of the different colors. It's not quite so discreet that it's um, everywhere, but maybe I'll take a brush that's kind of clean with just water and allow it to touch some of those red dots so we get like a gentler version of those colors. And this one up top is getting a little bit muddy. It's not muddy, but just it's a little blurrier and I'm kind of okay with that because it's, it's further away from us. All right, let's grab, oh man, I know this is gonna sound wild, but I'm gonna mix my permanent rose quinacridone, which is kind of like a pinky color with just a little bit of like blue, I get kind of a purple here. This is gonna give us a really nice sense of shadow. So just at the very, you know, where the nooks and crannies of this tree might show. Okay, do you see how that's just adding some really nice dimension there? Not too much, I don't wanna go overboard, but okay, loving it. Now I'm gonna go again with just some water. Make sure you have a clean brush when you do the water part. Otherwise you're gonna be bringing that color that you just added right all over your painting. And you know what? I'm kind of feeling like we need a little green, you know, these maybe not all these leaves have turned. And once again, I'm gonna tap my brush to my paper towel before I bring it over to the paper. I'm just gonna pepper a little green in there for just some extra dimension. All right. Maybe a little bit around the edge. Maybe a little bit right there. I don't know. Here we go. Oh, you know what? I think I want a little more orange. And so look at it, you know, take a minute. Sometimes it helps to just like go walk away and come back at it with fresh eyes. Maybe I'll do like a little few here falling. I don't know, you know, it's active fall, right? Falling around the tree. I'm definitely going a little longer on this one. I'm just having so much fun. Hope you all don't mind. All right, um, I don't know about you, but I just, maybe like kind of wild here and just, I don't know, I just want a little extra sky. I don't know if I like it, but you know what? It's there. So <laughs> here it is. So this is my autumn tree. I can't wait to see what you all do. I hope you enjoyed scumbling as much as I did. If you're not signed up and getting the daily emails, make sure that you do that with the link below because that is going to allow you to enter to win prizes, which is so fun. Uh, we will be drawing those um, one a week and then one at the end of the month. Uh, make sure you're liking and sharing and following along so you can see everybody's work. And I can't wait to paint with you. Happy painting. Bye. Oh, I'm still on. Sorry.